Right now in the Philadelphia Athletics, which was Grove's team, there's a little fellow, much smaller than Grove, who this year has won 22 games against a loss of only five. And the thing that has attracted tremendous attention is not only his winning streak, but the fact that he's about five feet five. And he steps in there and beats the big fellows. Ladies and gentlemen, we presented a lot of champions on this stage, but here is one of the greatest. Bobby Shantz. Bobby, there's been a lot of discussions just how small you are. How, how tall are you? Five foot six and a quarter. Five foot six and a quarter? What do you weigh? About 140 pounds. 140 pounds. Yes, sir. Where do you come from originally? Where were you born? Pottstown, Pennsylvania. And you started pitching in Pottstown at the high school team, probably? No, I never pitched in, in Pottstown. I played the outfield. Pottstown. Is that so? Yes. Funny, Stan Muser was on the program one night, and he told us that he started as a pitcher, and then he was converted to an outfielder. So this is the switch. That's right. Well, where'd you get into? Was your dad a big league player? Or no, was he, he a good never, semi-pro? He never played uh, big league baseball. He was a semi-pro in the Eastern Pennsylvania League, third baseman. Well, didn't you play in the same league later on? Yes, I played in, uh, with Soderton in the same league. Where uh, then did you play when you were playing with Soderton? We, was that where uh, Parisi caught for you? That's where I, Lou Parisi caught me. Because Roy Mack was telling me the other day on the phone, I was talking about you, that Parisi, your catcher, had recommended you. He said, despite his size, sign this youngster up for the big leagues. He's got it. Yes, he uh, told Harry O'Donnell about me, and uh, Harry O'Donnell sent me to Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, Nebraska. Well, I'm glad. Could you go to Lincoln and Mercury, Nebraska, and get in a good <laughs> commercial? <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, now, what, what was your first game in the big leagues? Well, I pitched two-thirds of an inning against Washington in 1949. Two, two-thirds of an inning? Yes. Were you that bad, or were, did you get them out that quickly? No, I got them out, but uh, about a week later, I was on my way to Buffalo. They shipped you out to Buffalo? Yeah, they shipped me out to Buffalo. They uh-huh. called me the same day. Now, wait, let me get this straight. They shipped you to Buffalo on the same day they recalled you? They recalled me the same day and had me report to uh, Detroit. We were playing Detroit the next day. Did you pitch in that Detroit series? And I pitched the second day. How'd you do? Well, I relieved Carl Scheib in the third inning, and... Uh, I was lucky enough to pitch no hit, no run ball up to the 13th inning. So 10 innings you pitched, you were lucky enough to pitch no hit, no run ball, huh? That's right. This is the understatement of the season. <laughs> now, now, in the big leagues, you've been in there now you're long enough to look over the entire circuit, certainly. Who are, are there any particular hitters that give you a lot of trouble? Well, there's quite a few of them giving me a lot of trouble, but uh, I think the... This Mickey Mantle of the Yankees and George Kell of Boston give me more trouble than anyone. Is that so? Well, come on, you Yankee fans. What do you, what do you think of that? <laughs> that boo you heard there, I'm afraid, is across the river. <laughs> Over across the river here, all of the wealthy people of our area live. These are Brooklynites. You've probably heard them. They're all millionaires. And they make that noise, it's sort of a tribal noise. Let me hear it out there. Let's hear the Brooklyn noise when you really rile up at the Giants. No, that's not it, the boo. I tell you what I'd like you to do, and I know the youngsters in the audience and baseball fans would too. Could you bring in a camera here close, Johnny and Marlo? Would you show some of the, the way you grip a ball in delivering it and, and explain what, uh, what the grip is for and what pitch you're throwing? Now, this is the way I hold a fastball. Mm-hmm. Across the seams. And, uh, we got a good close up there of your hand to show, turn that over there and let's see it. Uh-huh. And this is the curveball. I hold that right on the seams. Right on the seams. Mm-hmm. Now, how do you hide that so opposing teams, when they're waiting for, you know, when the coach is on third and first, are watching your hand very closely? Well, I keep moving. My, most of the time, I keep moving the ball around and keep it in back on me so they can't see uh-huh. it. When I come up, I have a big enough glove to hide it. So. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, very well. I see, they never do see that ball until you're finally have kicked off, no, huh? That's right. Who was the I know, remember there was one pitcher in the big leagues who used to wore, wear a Dazzy Vance, I think, he used to wear a tattered sleeve here. So the flapping of the sleeve despised the ball before he let it go. Yeah, I think so. Well, now, Bobby, it's great to have you on the show. You pitched today, I know. And, uh... Let's not talk about that. You don't want to talk about that one? <laughs> You've certainly given baseball fans. Before, before I close this out and before we treat you to some baseball, who do, who do you like in the American League race? Are you allowed to say uh, that, or is that an embarrassing question? I hate to admit it, but I like the Yankees. <laughs> oh, I see. 